Chris Noski is a horticulturalist and entrepreneur, and he's going to tell us about how his experience with drones has completely convinced him that drones can save farms a pile of money in pesticides and fertilizers. He uses precision application by huge seven-foot wingspan drones that require so much less chemical that they can pay themselves off in a single season. Chris is also the president of ProAg, a company he established to produce custom nanotechnology fertilizers and surfactants that can cut down on chemical use to a fraction of the usual amounts. Between nanotechnology and drones, Chris hopes innovative farms will see lower costs and bigger profits. Yeah, so again, thank you for the time today. It was uh, actually fascinating listening to the, the other people in, in the drone business, uh, for sure. Uh, my background is mostly horticulture, and so uh, I'm coming at this at a bit of a different angle. Um, so about uh, five years ago, uh, when we started ProAg, uh, ProAg's uh, main, I guess, role in, in, in the world is, is to develop um, new fertilizer and pesticide technologies that are more environmentally friendly and uh, much lower use rates than, than what's really out there uh, out there today. And so uh, we learned uh, really quickly that drones were probably going to be the, uh, the future when it comes to uh, crop protection and, uh, and, and growing. And so um, uh, quite early on, we linked up with a, uh, with a couple of different uh, drone companies, about three of them in total, uh, to help develop the technology uh, to, to where um, uh, an individual could actually spray a, a crop uh, with, their, uh, with a drone. And uh, so we're talking fairly large drones here. Uh, the largest one has uh, about a wingspan of seven and a half feet uh, long, and it's uh, not a fixed wing, it is an octocopter. Uh, so, um, uh, yeah, when we, we started down that road uh, with our, uh, our nanotechnology, which uh, I guess in a nutshell, um, where you would normally be putting on, say, one liter an acre of, of a zinc product or a potassium product, um, with this uh, type of technology, you're down to uh, to 80 uh, milliliters of product per acre um, in, in a drone. And so uh, we started doing a lot of work with uh, Dole and Driscoll's down in South America because up there in the banana plantations, uh, there's quite a lot of hills uh, in the mountainside there. And they, uh, they're flying these, uh, a lot of pesticides and fertilizers on with, uh, with Cessnas and uh, much smaller drones. And so um, we started working with them with some of these larger uh, drones for, for their areas and, uh, and we're instantly successful um, there. And really we're only applying about 18 liters of spray mixture per, uh, per hectare there. And so we can spray a fair amount of, uh, of acres uh, relatively quickly. So uh, uh, one of the things, uh, so first of all, like coming up with a drone, uh, the frame, the software, everything to go with it was, was one thing, but uh, um, these units also have to be easy for, uh, for growers to use. Uh, um, most of the growers, uh, well, in Canada and, and I guess North America, they're not like, uh, uh, like, uh, Dr. Church there. Um, you know, they're, they're not, not nearly, uh, tech savvy as, as that. So we needed units that could be easily programmed, um, and, uh, and to take away the, the whole, uh, human error factor. So these, uh, drones, they can be flown by themselves, but, uh, but we actually, uh, provide the laptops, uh, and, and the programming so that, uh, field can be easily mapped in, in no time at all. And, uh, and the drones can be filled and, and sprayed uh, autonomously or, or automatically, uh, as, as the Canadian government likes to say. They don't like autonomous drones, but automatic, uh, we'll say. Uh, so, um, yeah, we start with a 10-liter drone. Uh, we have uh, uh, up to a 22-liter drone now, um, uh, uh, but you're into different weight uh, categories. You need the advanced licenses and, and whatnot, and, and uh, the regulatory side is, is still a bit of a challenge. Um, but what we found is uh, uh, with the Health Canada is uh, they, they actually did testing on the drones themselves because they were worried about drift. So when you're spraying pesticides, uh, you know, that's why there's no aerial application allowed in BC is, is due to the drift. But uh, so they were really interested to see. Um, and I guess with the vortexing that's created by these drones, you're actually not getting the drift um, that you normally would out of a Cessna or, or a helicopter. 
And so uh, the government that actually, when they did their uh, their first test two years ago with the drone, uh, actually had less uh, less drift than your typical air blast type uh, uh, orchard sprayer. And so uh, uh, not only that, but uh, they actually uh, used 76% less pesticide use uh, and had better efficacy on, on the crop. So uh, there's a couple couple of things uh, that, that go into that, but that at least started the conversation that, okay, if, uh, if we're able to apply uh, less pesticides uh, per acre with these units and, and uh, more efficient fertilizer, uh, you can dramatically cut down your costs. So all of a sudden, a thirty-five dollars to $65,000 drone isn't, uh, isn't really out of the realm for, for most growers. If you can consider that you can cut your chemical bill uh, down by 75, 76%, uh, the return on investment to most farms here in the Fraser Valley is a couple of months, right? So um, yeah, they're uh, very beneficial there. So um, we have been working with a couple of companies. I, I do have a little video I can share, but I, I think your internet, your bandwidth here is, is really low. I'm not sure if it's going to play uh, properly, but we can try it. I have a picture I can show uh, instead of one of the uh, larger units. So this one uh, is one of the larger 20 uh, liter units. Uh, we've since moved uh, on to some of the smaller ones uh, due to some regulatory issues, but uh, what's interesting about these larger ones here uh, is that uh, the downdraft that's produced by these uh, these crops is actually, uh, when, when the tank is full, is actually equi equivalent to, uh, to a small helicopter. So uh, one of the things that we really noticed that uh, if, if that being the case is that uh, for all the cherry growers uh, to be able to go out there and blow rain off of cherry trees uh, with a drone is, is, is a huge opportunity. And so we're kind of working with some of the, uh, the helicopter companies uh, with these units so that they can, uh, they can fly these uh, drones instead of helicopters at a fraction of the cost with, without really any of the noise that a helicopter has as, as all of you uh, that, that grow cherries would, would be dealing with all those complaints about noise and whatnot. So um, um, there's some real uses outside of uh, even just spraying. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so with these uh, these units, uh, these larger units require uh, obviously not just the advanced license, but there's a special permit required uh, uh, for where you are uh, using these. Uh, when you go down to the 10 liter un uh, unit, which actually only has four arms, um, it uh, it doesn't require that uh, that permit. It's below the uh, the weight uh, class requirement. And what's nice about the 10 liter one is we've also been approved by Transport Canada to swarm uh, the, the drones. So that means that we can actually physically, or not physically, but program for them together and, uh, and operate them simultaneously uh, off the software. So what happens is uh, you hit go and all four lift up, up at the same time and they, uh, they spray different parts of the field uh, together and then will return empty uh, to be refilled. So, um, uh, yeah, the technology is, uh, has really come a long way in the last uh, five, six years uh, to where now, um, you know, somebody can easily uh, fill a tank, uh, hit go, uh, the, it'll come back a couple minutes later empty, you refill it uh, uh, about every other time you swap out the batteries. Uh, but if uh, we provide quite a few batteries with these, but uh, uh, if you keep them topped up, uh, you can run all day long. And so... Uh, um, one of the uh, one well, this this particular larger drone flies a little bit slower than the 10 liter one, uh, but uh, you get on average about uh, 18 to 25 acres per hour out of a drone uh, for for spraying and, and coverage and you're about 18 liters of spray mixture per per acre is what we found is is really uh, kind of the sweet spot for uh, for efficacy and, and coverage uh, now with with nanotech and, and some of the pesticides that uh, that are going through here. Um, we actually provide a, a surfactant that uh, we've uh, custom formulated here in order to help the spreadability of these products and help them work better. Because with that, that kind of low use rates, uh, um, you would really struggle to, to get 100% coverage. So what we've, uh, what we've done over the last three years is developed a surfactant that um, uh, would take one water droplet. Uh, if it, it was mixed with our surfactant, that one so that single water droplet would actually spread out to the size of an iPhone 8. 
um, on it, on your desk. So that's that's how far uh, we can spread one single droplet to get to get your your pesticide and your fertilizer all into into every little crevice. So um, technically, you're not allowed to spray with pesticides in BC uh, with these drones yet, uh, but the government is going to be approving this drone. Uh, we've been told by PMRA and uh, delegate actually has the insecticide delegate has actually been submitted uh, by Health Canada themselves uh, for drone application use. So there are going to be uh, a series of other uh, pesticides that we're going to try and get forced uh, registration on. Uh, the problem is, is that when you go uh, to get a registration for a chemical, uh, unfortunately, you need the, the chemical company support. Well, they're not going to support a, uh, a use that's going to, unfortunately, uh, cut their sales down by at least 75%. So um, there's, there's obviously some, some real issues there as far as the business side goes. Uh, but the, the, the latest study uh, from Health Canada uh, at the end of 2020 actually showed that they were in the 90% uh, chemical reduction uh, category with, with drone applications. So there's some real numbers there to, to think about. And so, you know, if you've got, uh, you know, even 50, uh, 50 60 acres uh, in your, your high value crop, um, couple of applications uh, uh, your your savings on pesticides alone would would pay for a drone once uh, once approved for for use by air so uh, stay tuned there's a lot of really uh, really neat work coming uh, for these units uh, but uh, this particular unit you're seeing on the screen right now um, this is kind of considered an older unit to us uh, um, we've had this one for about uh, three years now, and uh, this one would run uh, run you around 25 to 30 grand uh, just for the unit and some batteries and a charger and all that kind of stuff. Um, whereas the uh, uh, some of the newer ones that we're working on uh, with uh, with the RTK system, so uh, they they don't really operate just off a of GPS; they operate off an RTK, so it, it puts uh, it puts pinpoint accuracy on these spraying uh, rows. Uh, within one centimeter accuracy and so uh, with some of those drones uh, you know you're getting upwards of forty fifty thousand uh, dollars just for the unit but we haven't really we don't really sell the the drones as a as a singular unit uh, we actually have a package uh, where we include an actual covered uh, enclosed trailer with uh, with a compressor generator and all that kind of stuff so they're actually sold as a almost as a business unit uh, for, for guys um, because, uh, you know, these things are heavy. And if you're lugging them back and forth out, out of the back of a truck, you're, you're going to have a problem eventually. So um, we kind of provide you everything you need uh, in order to do it properly. And, uh, and yeah, they're, um, uh, I think really the future, uh, uh, as John was saying there, um, you know, they're, you're only going to be able to do more and more with these. And uh, even for this big unit here, you can easily pop that spray tank off and uh, we've got a granular spreader that bolts right onto that uh, within five minutes. So you could even spread fertilizer with it if you needed to do a, a granular application or a granular herbicide or something like that. Uh, it's quite easy to do. Um, we actually provide these to the to the US military as well. And, and I probably shouldn't say anything, but they're working on actually a, attaching a rifle to, to this unit. Uh, in order to, uh, I guess, to take out some high value targets somewhere. Um, but it just shows you the capabilities of, of a unit this size and, and the, the lifting capacity of something like this, which is, uh, I think on our, on our, our largest unit is, uh, is over 200 pounds. So um, um, there's, they're considered heavy lift drones. Um, anyway, I think uh, if my, if my video is not gonna work, I guess that's all I've got. Well, thanks very much, Chris. That's uh, a real a real insight. I was wondering about uh, you mentioned orchards. What, where's the uh, cost benefit? Where's the economics uh, breakdown now for for other kinds of farms? I'm thinking maybe large field crops, uh, maybe even hay or forage. Do, does it make sense in 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 situations outside of orchards yet? In forage, uh, until you could uh, be able to apply a herbicide through these units, uh, probably not. Um, but as uh, as John was saying, we have uh, LIDAR cameras uh, that'll bolt onto the bottom of these very easily. Um, magnetometers as well uh, for, for land surveying. Um, there's all kinds of different uh, cameras. I think there's over 300 attachments that could actually go on here. Um, so 
um, there's actually even a soil sampling attachment uh, that can that can go on the bottom of these to to actually pull soil samples from from different parts of the the fields and return them to to home base. So there's really uh, an endless amount of uh, uh, opportunities for for something like that. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I think until uh, until you're able to spray herbicide, as far as a lot of the the forage type farms, uh, probably not going to make sense. But uh, you know, orchards where you could uh, use it to dry cherries, uh, you could apply your uh, your fertilizers, your uh, your GA uh, at bloom, um, anything like that, uh, the drone would pay for itself pretty quickly.